us. Uh, in our next lightning talk, uh, we're going to invite our friends from across the pond in Bristol, UK, and they're going to share a case study about how they've turned Bristol, UK into a smart, sustainable, and livable city. So please welcome Max Wide and Stephen Hilton. Thank you. We'll look for a, a clicker. Uh, this is called a lightning presentation, so things are going to flash up and then disappear. I think that's why it's lightning. So my name is Max Wide. I'm strategic director of Bis uh, Business Change at Bristol City Council. Uh, it's an organisation with about 6,500 employees, about a £380 million pound budget, uh, and I kind of run the council. So I do all of the stuff. I run ICT and I run finance and I run HR and I run policy and strategy and I also run a thing called the Change Programme, which is our attempt in the current economic climate to save an awful lot of money. I'm Steve Hilton. I'm uh, a director at Bristol City Council. I, I run a department called Bristol Futures, which is an unusual council department, but it leads on city innovation, high tech and low carbon. Good. So I'm going to start off. So this is Bristol. If we click to the next slide, Max. This is where we are. If you want to come and visit, just follow the arrow. Um, we are, as Max said, a city of about half a million in a city region of about a million. And, that, that's, and this is what we are. So we particularly recognise that as a city we have strengths around ICT, digital industries, and also around green and sustainability. Creative, smart, green, connected, open and inclusive is what we are. Next slide. So you've heard a lot during the day about the drivers for open data and smart programmes. I'm not going to talk about all of these because you've heard much today about most of them. I haven't heard much today about sustainability. And for Bristol being a livable, green, low carbon and prosperous place is what we're about. So our data work and our smart city work is also about how do we conserve energy, how do we envisage new ways of moving around the city? How do we manage logistics in order to um, ensure that the city is as environmentally sustainable as possible? Next slide. OK. <clears throat> so uh, because I run the organisation, Sometimes I'm kind of intrigued as to the impact, if you like, of all of the things that we're talking about today. Um, and for me, I have to kind of make sure that certain things wash their face, as, it's, as, it, as, it, as we say. Um, so we have to reduce expend we've reduced expenditure by 25% in the last three years. Um, and we will need, uh, in the next three years following that, to reduce it probably by an additional 40%. So we take out a huge amount out of, of, our, of our base budget. And there is a choice for us, therefore, as to whether we just become a smaller version of what we are now, or whether we choose to run our organisation entirely differently. Um, and for us, we've taken that choice that we want to be a different kind of organisation. But that means that the, the data agenda and the open data agenda needs to change us as an organisation and change our relationship with citizens. So just so I'm really clear, the transparency agenda is useful, but it's not enough. The performance management agenda is useful, uh, but it's not enough. Um, and, the, and, the, and, the performance, sorry, and the performance management agenda is, is useful, but not enough. So we have, to, we have to kind of move beyond some of those things and become a very different kind of organisation. Um, and we called that a platform organisation. So there are various people who will talk about different platforms, digital platforms, citizen platforms, all of those kinds of things. But for us, it's about having a very different relationship with citizens and having a very different kind of organisation one that's not uh, uh, defined by the bricks and mortar that we live in, but by the networks that we sustain and the networks that we create and the extent to which we drive change from the outside in. So in order to be able to do that, the council platform, as we like to describe it, has to do a number of different things. So um, we have all of our services on it, but we also use that platform to rate services so that people can talk about how good those services are and give us feedback on them. Um, we like to encourage peer-to-peer -peer information so that people are supporting each other, so that groups so, for example, young disabled people or older people can talk with each other uh, across the platform. Predictive analytics is really important, particularly working with uh, troubled families, as we call them, families on the edge of going into care. Uh, and it's really important that we use data to understand who those families are and to intervene earlier in their lives so that they don't end up um, costing the council an awful lot of money and going through an awful lot of unnecessary distress. App development is really key. Bristol is a very, very vibrant and technological city. And part of our challenge is to connect to those people um, rather than to transfer, so that they begin to transform the council. So those kind of applications are really important. And finally, it's really important also that we're getting communities to work with each other.
together and communities to take on certain tasks and to do certain things for themselves that perhaps in a more dependent relationship with government in years gone by uh, we haven't been able to do. So, next slide, Max. I'm getting there. So, let's focus in on data. So, this looks like a really neat um, linear thing, and it doesn't work like that at all. So, um, it, it, we do all of these things at the same time. I'm going to just run through quickly how we're doing this to give you a sense of the activities that are going on within the city. So, the next slide. We have a Socrata platform. We've been working, I would say, collaboratively with Socrata over the last year. Um, we need to understand what we want from a city data platform and we've been very active in giving Socrata feedback on the platform as to how it works in a UK and European context. We've got about 150 data sets in there. We've got another 100 coming through in the background. Next slide. And we do a lot to reach out to citizens and others in order to get engagement with the platform. We visited Chicago a year, 18 months ago, and we've invested in creating the Southwest Data Meetup Group. Now has 568 members, meets on a monthly basis. There's normally 60, 70 people turn up just to talk about data. <laughs> we also engage with our um, communities directly, and we like to do that in a really creative way. So um, our Playable Cities program was a way of using technology and data to create experiences for people. Hello Lamp Post was the first project we did which invited people to talk to and wake up lamp posts and street furniture and the lamp posts and street furniture talked back. <laughs> um, we also had shadowing which was a spin on CCTV so instead of surveillance it, um, we installed cameras and projectors that played back the shadows of people who'd walked past lamp posts so you got a sense of what was happening in the city before you. We, um, uh, we encourage use by also opening up our data. So this was 100 data sets in 100 days, which was our opening challenge to ourselves to try and introduce some pace. And like many cities, we engage widely in hackathons and other events. I'll quickly show you some of the results. Next slide. Crocodile is an app that um, we commissioned as part of our Green Capital Year or it will set up a competition to create. It tries to solve the problem of parents driving their kids to school by creating an app that allows parents to feel comfortable in letting their kids walk. So it looks at safe routes data, it looks at alerts for parents, it looks at how you can build in things like air quality to provide a route that everybody feels happy with. The Energy app is one that's used by our community energy organisation to look at um, targeting areas of the city that could benefit the most from energy retrofit in housing. Part of the deal is if you then take up that um, improvement, you share your data back into the app and into the portal so that people can get a sense of the before and after. Hills of Evil was our attempt to create an accessible route map for people with limited mobility. And I heard something earlier from Seattle, um, which was very similar. And I guess the sense of this is that it's not just about the apps for Bristol, it's also about building the communities of users and owners of these apps at the same time. Next slide, Max. So uh, all that Stephen has talked about uh, kind of represents some of our, I suppose, early experimentation. And I think it has been enormously successful uh, in embracing and engaging the city. But there is, a, I suppose, going back to my immediate challenge and my financial challenge, you know, have we, are we there yet with any of this stuff? No, we're not. Um, and one of the things that we've created, therefore, are opportunities for income generation. So we have uh, a thing called Bristol is Open, which is a joint venture between us um, and the University of Bristol. And essentially, it relies on... On, um, a fiber ring that was left in the ground by a company called Rediffusion who left the city many years ago and sold to the city council for 40k I think 40,000 uh, pounds this 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 uh, fiber ring and we've invested in that enormously so it now runs data around the city at about 10 gigabytes uh, per second um, and what we've tried to do is to do a number of things so we've tried and it's a good method it's a good example I suppose of what we're trying to do so rather than us run that what we've done is to just make that open to people who want to come and visit the city and want to run experiments in the city and so we have NEC and various other people coming to do exactly that now it allows us to take things like telecare and telehealth onto a new level we've previously played with that but it's really been a something of a kind of cottage industry so it now allows us to be able to do that on a much grander scale 
It allows us to visualise data. <clears throat> Most of our councillors, our elected representatives, like to have a good 150 page reports on everything. So what we've now done is to put them into a planetarium uh, where we can fly them over the city so that they can see the data emerging from streets and all sorts of other places. And it is a very interesting way to engage members in decision making. Um, <clears throat> This is a, a picture of it, so it's a, a huge fibre ring and it's also attached to two supercomputers and has a software defined network on it. So all of the experimentation that, that Stephen has talked about and all of the approach that we've taken, it, what we're trying to do now is to really scale this up so that we can become a city that people can come and play in, that businesses, that public sector providers can do entirely different things in. Um, and that wouldn't be possible, I suppose, without something like Bristol is Open. And just some two final thoughts about where we're headed next. So we recognise that cities play an important role between government and between communities. We've entered into our, a conversation with the government in the UK about devolving data from central government to Bristol. Um, and we believe that we have 28 use cases that would support the principle that government should allow us access, privileged access, to central government data that we can blend with local data and commercial data in order to create new sorts of services. And we're talking about things like personalised skills and jobs portals. We're talking about potentially a welcome pack for people that move to the city. We're talking about practical uses of data from different sources to bring about benefits for people. And the second part of that contract is from the city to citizens. So we have an idea of what we call a data commons, which is actually starting to formalise the agreement between the city and citizens about what, what, what are the rules around this thing called data, and if I'm giving you my data, what do I get in return? So those two things are part of how we're creating a framework and a sort of a real ecosystem linking government, the council and citizens in order to get value and to help to address some of the issues that Max has raised. So thank you. So that's it. Come and see us. Bye-bye.